Come on, get out of the elevator. The partner's in trouble up there. From what I understand, she's a witness. She maintains she didn't see anything. He wanted justice. She wanted freedom. With or without your help. Oh, who's your boyfriend? I'm gonna get him. Show him that you belong to me. That was given to him. Now they want something more. Don't let him kill you. You die, my friend! Richard Gere, Kim Basinger. No Mercy, rated R. Starts Friday at a theater near you. Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 1986 action thriller, No Mercy. Now, this is one of those films that, in all honesty, really intrigued me ever since I saw the trailer on an old VHS tape. I don't remember which tape it was, but I saw the trailer, and it looked like it might be a solid film. It looked like a film that had a lot of potential. And then I finally sat down and watched the film recently, and I was crushed with disappointment because this film at best is mercilessly mediocre and at worst, it's shockingly below average. This is one of those movies that has a ton of potential, has the right ingredients, but for the most part, it just winds up being sunk in a swamp of mediocrity and forgettableness like, like it's 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 like if you ordered a gumbo at an average restaurant and what you got on your plate is all the right ingredients for a gumbo but it's tasteless and bland so the film is directed by richard pierce and prior to this he hadn't really done a lot of films of this type and it does show because this movie has a lot of low energy like, it's very lacking when it comes to uh, some genuine punch or spice or flavor. It's one of those films that I personally feel had the wrong person behind the camera. Because he just, he's just, this is just not his kind of genre. And it's not the fact that he's a bad director overall. He can set up some nice looking shots. This film does have some really uh, cool and um, mesmerizing shots at times. I mean, the sequence near the end where John Crabbe's character, the villain of the film, breaks through a burning wall is a really memorable sequence. It's like something straight out of a slasher movie. But there's a lot of other shots in the film that are just bland, that are palatable at best. And a lot of the action, when it is there, just doesn't have that extra adrenaline that a better, more suited director in this genre would have provided. Prior to this, he did dramas. He did a film called Threshold, which is about an artificial heart. He did a film called Country, uh, which is a drama about farmhands and and uh, small town country uh, farmers going up against big business. And this just is not the kind of film that he was the most suited for. And I do feel if you had a more action oriented director, this film would have been better. But I still feel even if you had a more action oriented director, this film still would have been relatively poor because of the screenplay. This script is where, for the most part, the ingredients just aren't seasoned enough. They don't have the right amount of spices. And it also feels like there's some ingredients missing entirely that are very integral to a successful dish, a, a really spicy, delicious gumbo. I mean, the writing by Jim uh, Carabazzos... I don't know how much this guy has done in terms of, of writing prior to this or after. My guess is probably not a lot, because it's not like you really hear his name very often nowadays. And for a good reason. It's got the, the right setup for a action thriller with a cop, a tough, rough-and-tumble Chicago cop whose partner gets killed... And he goes to Louisiana 
to try to find the guy who killed his partner. So it becomes a down and dirty kind of revenge film. It is trying to sprinkle in some film noir elements, which maybe with a better writer might have worked. But here it just makes the tone feel off. And when it comes to the action in this movie, for the most part, it's fucking awful. The action in this film is astonishingly bad because none of the car chases or shootouts or anything have any life to them. They are about as lifeless as a fucking corpse. And, and a lot of it has to do with what the script provides. There's only so much you can do with foot chases. So much you can do with the a little piddly car chase that surprisingly does end with an explosion via a rocket launcher, but because of the way that things are shot and the way that things are put together, there's no adrenaline to it. There's no rush. It's just, oh, that's interesting. And that's about it. Uh, even the finale, which takes place in a burning building, it's completely and totally devoid of life there's fire everywhere there's potential for shootouts and fun gunplay uh, or a good fight between Richard Gere's character and the villain and you don't even get any of that it's a it provides a great entrance for the villain who busts through a burning wall like he's Michael fucking Myers but then he just gets killed Pretty much off screen by his own knife. Some lame little struggle. And then you get stabbed and that's it. That's it. All this build up for this villain who disemboweled Richard Gere's character's partner. And it's insinuated that he strangled him with his own intestines. And the guy just fucking dies in the most pathetic, ho-hum way imaginable. For a film called No Mercy, there's really not much that makes you think that this film deserves that title. Because it's not a relentless film in terms of the action or the pacing. And the writing is also shockingly substandard when it comes to the characters. The character that Richard Gere portrays in this film, Eddie Gillette, is an asshole. You don't like this guy. From the very beginning, something just seems off about this guy. Like he's too cocky or he's just too much of a prick. And then later on, as the film goes on, he reveals even more tendencies that make him even more frustrating to watch. Because you're like, wow, this is my hero. A guy who abuses Kim Basinger's character, not once, but twice. He takes Michelle, he slaps her in the face in one sequence early on in the film, and then later on in the film, he slaps her again after they were supposed to be an item. They were supposed to have fallen in love. And then he's smacking her in the fucking face. He's bitch slapping her like he's her pimp. You have scenes where it doesn't really feel... Like these two characters, Michelle and Eddie, are meant to be together. It doesn't feel like they're falling for one another. You have scenes where they are at each other's throat. Eddie's calling her a whore, and so on. And it's very uncomfortable and awkward. And then an hour and 20 minutes into the movie and into the story, then they fall in love randomly. And they bang. And you're like, what the fuck is this? This isn't earned. This doesn't feel right. And then afterwards, it's just as awkward as before because he's smacking her in the face again. So, I don't understand the writer's thought process. I don't understand what he was thinking when it comes to writing these characters. The villain, there's nothing to this guy. Jaron Crabb is trying because he's a, he's a very capable actor. And the script provides a little bit of menace, but there's no development. There's no depth to this guy. He might might as well just be a random final boss in a video game who looks imposing, but you beat him pretty quick 
and then you move on to the next guy. Uh, maybe mini boss is better because final boss means that he would be more of a badass and leave more of an impression. Yeah, he's more like just a forgettable mini boss. And you have potential intrigue with Eddie Gillette being a fish out of water in Louisiana, but it doesn't really do that much with that. And there's a lot of instances where maybe it might be trying to provide a bit of a mystery, but then doesn't really go anywhere with that either. I think if you're going to do a film noir kind of thing, you really should have had an actual mystery because what's the mystery there? What, what is the mystery where uh, the villain is where Michelle is? That's what it seems like where Lasado and Michelle are located. That's what the mystery is. Because it's not it's not like there's a murder mystery in the in 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 the middle of all of this. You have these other characters that are brought in and it just feels like they're useless and wasted. I mean, you've got William Averton who plays some scumbag named Alan Devino who's a dickhead and I guess it's in any way that he's working with Asado, the main villain but it's not like he gets any comeuppance it's not like anything really happens with this guy so it just feels like complete and total bullshit why he's even there uh Bruce McGill plays the lieutenant who uh is a member of the police department in Louisiana who d doesn't really take kindly to the outsider Gillette putting his nose in his territory it's a very stock standard kind of role you've got george zunda who plays the the police captain the chicago police captain who's tired of gillette's shit as well and of course you've got michelle kim basinger's character who is essentially a whore i mean richard gear is not wrong but he was very blunt about it and it just it just came across the wrong way. Um, she is a uh, hooker in a lot of ways because she's owned by uh, Lasado. But apparently she's not one of those that actually goes out and sells her body to other men. She's only owned by one man and one man alone, Lasado. So she's more like a personal whore, I guess. Um... And there, there's some potential interesting sort of stuff with that, but like I said, they don't really do a whole lot with it. And it seems way too easy that he, she's able to get a, get away from Lasado and and um, get out of being under his thumb just because Lasado ultimately gets taken out by the end of the movie. But maybe that's just how it is. Like, there's no special underground group of um, characters that ba that uh, have band bound together to work with Asado, like some underground syndicate. But it's kind of insinuated that there is something like that going on. So it just just makes it seem like it's a little too easy for her to to get out of this situation. She just happens to meet Richard, Richard Gere's character, some Chicago cop who's who's willing to do whatever it takes to get revenge for the death of his partner. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Probably because I was so bored most of the time throughout the movie that I had to think about things in order to keep myself somewhat invested in anything. And speaking of bad writing, there's a lot of lines of dialogue that are just laughably over the top, talking about stale piss and maggot shit. And it's the kind of lines where you're like, who wrote this? A, a fucking eight-year-old who got access to a book of insults? Like, what? this is just childish and and feels like a parody of this genre. And it's fitting that there's lines of dialogue talking about stale piss because in a lot of ways this film is stale piss. 
the cast, like I said, it's not a bad cast. You got Richard Gere, Kim Basinger. I mean, Kim Basinger at maybe possibly the peak of her hotness. Like she is a total force of nature in this film. She's gorgeous. She definitely does draw your eye to her. And she's trying to make this into a film that will actually leave some kind of lasting impact but it's very fleeting i mean yeah she's hot in this but if i want hot with a film with hot women doing a lot of strip teases and shit or, or being sexy i just watch a fucking porn why do i have to why would i do this why would i choose no mercy when it comes to that richard gear he's a good casting choice he's good at playing these kind of intense edgy characters but the script does him no favors and makes him a character who is supposed to be your your engaging protagonist that you go along for the ride with and you root for to a guy who's just kind of a fucking prick to the point where you don't even really care what happens. You don't care if he gets revenge over his partner or not. You kind of just want to see him get his ass kicked. You got Jaron Crabb who is a great character actor who plays really good menacing villains and bad guys. And here, it's no exception, but the villain is so painfully poorly written in terms of any depth that he might as well be paper thin. George Zunda, he's the guy who says a lot of these really ridiculous lines of dialogue. Uh, William Averton, once again, plays a good dickhead. But that's really it. There's not much to that character other than that. Bruce McGill, another good actor. Just the angry police chief cliche who's angry at the outsider coming into his territory. You've got other actors like Ray Sharkey. You have Charles S. Dutton in a, in a really brief blink-and-you-miss-it role. And they are completely wasted because they, they are given roles where they pretty much have nothing to fucking do. So you have a good chunk of this script where the actors are given a lot of jack shit when it comes to uh, the elements that they have to work with. And they're trying to do the best that they can to try to make salad out of chicken shit but there's really not you i mean at the end of the day that's not possible so they fail you got the screenplay that spends way too much of the time trying to do this romance and it fails miserably because it, you don't buy that these two characters michelle and eddie are lovers you don't buy that they are falling for each other you buy more that one of the characters is going to kill the other at some point then you do them actually falling in love. You got a villain who's there, who's like a menacing shadow, but he has all the impact and power of a fucking shadow on the wall where you're like, oh, there's a shadow. It looks kind of creepy, but eh, whatever. It's just a shadow. I'll forget about that in, in a minute or less. Action, when it is there, is lethargic, has no life, no energy to it, no creativity. I love the contrast of the setting, where it starts out in cold, blustery, windy Chicago. That's so freezing outside, you can see your breath on camera. And then contrasting that with the really sweaty, humid jungles of louisiana like that's a nice contrast but that alone doesn't make this a good movie or a good story the performances like i said they're doing what they can but what they have to work with is so cliched so generic so bland so tasteless that there's not much that they can do the film also features a good score. I like the score by Alan Silvestri. I think it's honestly one of his more overlooked scores, especially the main theme. I really like the main theme. Just wish that this score was in a better movie. Because it deserved better. 
And it has some nice looking cinematography by Michael Brault, especially when it comes to the shots of Chicago at night with the bright street lights that illuminate the darkness and working with uh, different contrasts. And there's some really great set pieces and shots that take place during the burning uh, fiery climax and also during the sequences where Kim Basinger and Richard Gere are on the run, running through the bayou. But despite the fact that it looks slick, it looks stylish, it's just very artificial. It's very empty. It's like trying to provide a soul to a film with just pure visuals, but that's just not possible without a soulful, strong story and and characters that you root for and you are on their side. And this lacks those kind of characters. It lacks characters that you genuinely love and you care about. And it lacks a plot that's engaging or interesting for the most part because it's just a very generic plot about a cop who wants to get revenge on uh, someone who killed his partner. Been there, done that a million times. It's only 108 minutes, but it feels a lot longer than that because, like I said, there's not a lot that keeps you invested consistently. It bogs down way too much due to poor writing and poor characterization. And the editing, I guess, is all right as well by Gerald B. Greenberg and Bill uh, Yaw Ross. But technical elements are only one part. They're only one ingredient of a successful film. And they don't really make up for the lack of a strong story and strong characters. And No Mercy is a prime example of that. Just such a crushing disappointment. I can see why this didn't do well when it came out. I can see why it came out in theaters, bombed, and pretty much everybody forgot about it, and it got bad reviews. Because it did fucking deserves it. It didn't deserve to be a hit, and it doesn't deserve good reviews. Because it's not a good movie. As much as it pains me to admit that. For a film called No Mercy... It's one of the most listless, lame action thrillers of the 80s. This did not deserve that title. I've said that once, but I'll say it again. It should have that title stripped from it. Because that's the kind of title that you should give to an action film like Salone's Cobra. Where there's balls to the wall action and you got a straightforward but simple plot. But it makes up for it with characters that you root for and you are engaged with entirely throughout the film i mean action how do you call yourself and market yourself as an action thriller when you don't have much action at all to speak of i mean even the end credits has a song that just feels so out of place that you're just scratching your head you're like what the hell is this fucking crap this michael mcdonald joe cocker track i don't know who sang it but it doesn't fit with the film. And it's also disappointing because it just sums up how unfocused and how sloppy this movie is. Yeah, uh, as you can say, I, as you can see, my bad, I definitely was not a fan of this film. And I wanted to be. Like I said, I saw the trailer and I liked it. And I thought it looked like it could be a good movie. And then I sit down and watch it. And I'm bored throughout most of the movie. And I feel like I'm bogged down in the same swamp that Richard Gere and Kim Basinger were stuck, were stuck in. And at the end of the day, I'm like, wow. That fucking sucked. I never want to watch that movie again. It's not the worst thing out there. But arguably, it's worse than some of the worst films that I've seen because they had no potential to speak of. This had the right ingredients, and they fucked it up. So, anyway, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about No Mercy except uh, check it out only if you're curious. 
Otherwise, I would recommend skipping this because for the most part, it's just a massive disappointment. Like I said, it's mercilessly mediocre at best. It really is. Anyway, thank you for watching uh, my review of No Mercy. And as always, I'll see you later. See ya.